the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. All right, welcome back to the Sports Renegades here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stuprich. And I'm Ryan Risky. And joining us on the SportstownChicago.com hotline is Aaron Lemming of the Bear Report. Aaron, how's it going? Doing well. How about you guys? Yeah, we're doing well, and uh, it's great to have you on, Aaron. And uh, I guess the first thing that we want to ask you about is the Martellus uh, uh, trade that happened, him going to the Patriots uh, for a a uh, fourth-round pick, I believe, from uh, New England. How do you feel about this move? Uh, I think it's great. I mean, the fact that Ryan Pace was even able to get any sort of value out of him after what was rumored to basically have no value uh, is great. So, I mean, you look at it, uh, you really got to look at it one way, and that's the fact that they traded John Bostic and they traded Martell's Bennett for a fourth-round pick, and that's really the way, the best way of looking at it. You know, a fourth-round pick, especially with the way uh, – that pace pick last year, and with the reputation that this this uh, you know this, this scouting staff is going to have, I mean that could be big. I mean that could be the difference between uh, a day one starter and somebody who may just be depth on the depth chart. So I mean it's it's definitely a big move. I mean obviously you would like to have Martell as on the team, but there's just no way that that uh, those fences were going to be mended. Uh, how do you feel now that they're they've kind of given the starting role to uh, Zach Miller right now? Oh, well, you know, Zach Miller is a really good tight end. Um, unfortunately, he's had a lot of injury problems in his career. I got a chance to talk to him last training camp and sat down with him and really got a feel for him. I mean, the guy, is, he, he's, he's a great guy. He's very confident. Uh, he's made no excuses for any of his injuries, and all he's done is battle back. I mean, he's he's a guy that really deserved the chance that he got. I mean, he stayed loyal to the team through the two years he was there, even through the transition, uh, you know, with obviously a new GM and all that. So, uh, you know, he waited it out, and he got his chance. He did well last year. I mean, realistically, he looked better than Bennett did last year. Um, so if he can stay healthy, I think I think he's got a few good years left in him. I think a two-year deal was good. Uh, obviously got to get a little bit of depth behind him at this point. Uh, but I definitely think – I don't think we'll see a, a large drop-off as, as some people think, uh, especially going from – you know, just going from Miller to Bennett, I don't think it's going to be as big of a drop-off as everybody thinks. Now, do you think that the Bears are still in line to make a couple moves before training camp starts or even before the NFL draft? Or do you think uh, that all their main moves, like uh, Forte signing with the Jets and Martellus uh, leaving, do you intend uh, that, that the Bears will have another big move? You know, I don't think there's going to be another big move just because there's really not many big names on the market right now. Something to keep in mind is the fact that I mean, they've got $24.5 million in cap space, and that doesn't count Mitch on Ryan um, or Mark Mariani at this point. But at the same time, I mean, they're still going to have quite a bit of money to work with, uh, even after you know compensating for the draft and all that. But like I said, I mean, there's really just not much on the market right now. Uh, so it's definitely be interesting to see. I mean, they're definitely not done making moves by any means. I think you're going to see a lot of one-year deals. I think you may see one more multi-year deal. I really don't know who that would be at this point. Maybe a tight end. You know, Jared Cook is a candidate for that. Uh, if Ryan Clady gets released, he may be an option. I don't think it would be the smartest thing just because of his injury history and the fact that he's almost 30. Uh, but, they, I mean, they definitely still have some options, some guys that can come in and be day one starters and still be upgrades, but I don't think there's any real long-term solutions out there in free agency that we're going to see that will have a big impact. Now, the, the linebacker position coming into free agency, is a big, big holes to fill. They signed Danny Trevathan then, and uh, Freeman from the Colts. Um now, looking ahead to the draft, what position do you think they might address with that 11th overall pick? You know, really, I think it's going to be wide open. Uh, I mean, they can go offensive line, they can go defensive line. You know, defensive line is really deep, so they don't have to go. You know, they have to go 11 overall. I mean, they can go defensive back. I really, at this point in time, I mean, uh, just pick one, and you know, maybe they can go that way. I mean, I know that there's certain players that they like. I know one of them is Carson Wentz, the quarterback out of uh, North Dakota State. Uh, I don't think he's going to be there when they pick. Another one is Ezekiel Elliott. He could be another top option that a lot of people don't seem to like at running back. I mean, he's 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 a very good talent. Um, I don't I don't know if he'll be around then. So, I mean, overall, I really do think it's going to be best player available. Um, there's really so many different ways this draft can go. Uh, the top end talent isn't overly. Uh, special, I would say. I mean, especially from the, the talent from Bob Polly, I don't know, pick 10 on to maybe about pick 18 or 19. I mean, it was really 
pretty subjective. So uh, overall, I think you know they can really go wherever they want. They can trade down, they can trade up, but I really couldn't pinpoint one spot where they're going to go, especially with how unpredictable the first ten picks are going to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking if the Bears draft a quarterback, it wouldn't be until maybe the third or fourth rounds at the earliest, uh, just because of the good season Jay Cutler had last year. Um, I wanted to ask you about Jay Cutler. Do you think uh, or do you anticipate that, that he will uh, have um, another good year in, in 2016? Absolutely. I think uh, I definitely think he's on the right track. I mean, he had a really good year last year. And something to keep in mind, too, when we're talking about drafting a quarterback. I mean, it's not the fact that if, if, if they draft a Carson Lynch, he's not going to start right away. I mean, he's a, he's a developmental guy anyway. He's probably got the highest ceiling out of anybody in the draft. Right. Uh, he could go to another team and start. But at the same time, you know, Jay Cutler is going to be here uh, I would imagine for at least two more years. So, I mean, if you could pick up a developmental guy, uh, especially somebody that the Bears like, I personally like Dak Prescott out of uh, Mississippi State a lot, you know, in the third or fourth round, then do it. You know, they they need depth at the position. I don't think David Fields is the answer. They haven't signed anybody else. Uh, so I, I definitely think uh, that they do need depth and they can develop somebody. And, you know, worst case, if, if they get a taste of that person over the next year or two and it doesn't work out, then they can you know, they could address that again. But as far as Cutler goes, I mean, he played – he probably had his best best season as a pro. So, I mean, he's he, – I think he's definitely at home in, the, in this type of system. I don't think we're going to see much of a change uh, going from Gase to Loggins at this point. So, I, I definitely think he's in the driver's seat to have another good year. The biggest thing is just going to be the commitment to the run game, getting him a little bit better of an offensive line. I think they've done a good job of that so far. There's still improvements that can be made. There's a lot of development that can be made off that offensive line. I mean, Charles Leno at left tackle and uh, Harada Scrossu at center are just, you know, the two starting pieces. But I think he's in a good position to keep up the success that he had from last year. Now, how do you like uh, the Bears uh, signing of the of their the right tackle to move Kyle Long back to uh, guard? Well, I'll, I'll say this. I, I love – uh, I love Kyle Long at right guard. I think that was the best move that they could have made um, in terms of moving him back. I mean, he's an all-pro right guard, and quite frankly, I mean, he's probably an average tackle with some upside. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of Bobby Massey, not to say that he's bad. I mean, he's, he's, he'll be a solid right tackle for them. He's very good against the run, but he's questionable against the pass, you know, in, in the passing game. So, It'll definitely be interesting to see how that works out. I know he's a notoriously slow starter in the season. I uh, really picked it up in the last little bit of the season going into the playoffs especially. So, I mean, there's really – it's not a downside. And, uh, frankly, I think he'll be probably right around the same caliber as uh, Long was last year right tackle, maybe a little bit below. But he's, he's still got some upside. He's still young. He's 26 years old. So, overall, I mean, their offensive line improved a lot. And, I mean, don't don't discount the fact that Kyle Long is going to be next to uh, Horan Scossu now. I mean, that's definitely a big move. They're going to have a Mueller interior line right now. And that's that's a big thing, especially with their commitment to the run game. So, overall, I mean, when you really look at the move as a whole, it's definitely a, a big move for them. You know, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that, you know, with the signing of Massey. You know, he's really good as a run blocker, except in pass blocking, he's not the best. Except, as you said, they, they're moving Kyle Long back to his natural position, which he's been absolutely terrific there. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think, you know, having Long at his best position, I, I know – you know, the the big thing is everybody wanted to move the left tackle. And quite frankly, I just don't think he profiles well there. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's great in the run game. He's okay in the pass game. As long as you keep him inside, I mean, he's going to be an all-pro for you. He's probably going to be one of the best in the game. Uh, it makes him a little cheaper in terms of, you know, when they go to re-sign him. Uh, so, I mean, overall, I think it's a win-win for them. And, uh, of course, moving on to the wide receivers, it's really interesting to look at who the Bears are going to have next year, um, of course, if they, they draft another wide receiver. But they're going to have Kevin White, uh, who's going to be playing, and Alshon Jeffrey. And those are you know going to be the two main weapons. And, of course, there were some other guys that played pretty well last year. Uh, do you think that this receiving core can compete with the other teams in the division, like the, the Packers, Lions, and Vikings? Absolutely. I think when healthy, they have one of the best receiving cores in the NFL. I mean, you you look at it, and obviously Kevin White didn't play last year. Alshon Jeffrey is one of the best receivers in the game when he's healthy. Uh, I think that's going to be a big point of emphasis for him. I mean, I, I do think the Bears are going to get some sort of deal done with him at some point, a long-term deal. But right now, I mean, going into the season as of now, I mean, he's going to be playing on the franchise tag. And obviously you have a guy like Eddie Royal who signed a three-year, $15 million deal last year, was injured and really didn't do much. But, I mean, over his career, he's been a good receiver. He's a, he's a very reliable third-down target. And then you have Marquise Wilson, who's a very solid fourth receiver. 
receiver. Uh, I do think they'll end up adding somebody, whether that be through free agency or the draft. I don't know how big impact it'll be, but I would expect uh, maybe maybe the speed guy. Um, you know, they got a pretty good amount of big possession guys. Uh, so I, I think, you know, going that route, they can get somebody in the fourth, fifth, sixth round, you know, later on in the draft. But overall, I do think they have a very good receiving core as long as they all stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that is a key because uh, last year I don't think any team had a more banged-up receiving core than the Bears did. Absolutely. I mean, it, it really, when you look at it as a whole, I mean, they, they just had a ton of injuries all together, I mean, all over the team, but especially at receiver. I mean, Kevin White didn't play a snap. Alshon Jeffrey, even when he was there, I don't think he was really that healthy. Eddie Royal missed a pretty good amount of time. Marquise Wilson missed some time. I mean, when we really look at it, the top four guys, they never played together, um, and that was a big thing. When you when you trade away Brandon Marshall the way that they did, um, you, you expect you know, these guys to pick up the slack, and unfortunately they couldn't because most of them you know, were either on IR or you know, sitting out. So I do think health is going to be a big thing, but if healthy, I think they're going to have a very good, very good group. And it's going to be fun to watch, especially to see how Kevin White with his speed can complement a big go-up-and-get-it receiver like Alshon Jeffrey. Absolutely. You know, it's just, uh, I think a lot of people have forgot just how good Kevin White is. I mean, this is the guy that was projected as number one receiver all the way up until right around the draft last year. I mean, he's a fast guy. He's, he's a big body guy. He's, he, overall, he's a very good receiver. So I, I think, uh, most Bears fans are going to be pleasantly surprised. And that's something to keep in mind when you look at this draft class, uh, for this year. The fact that they, they essentially have another number one pick that's not being accounted for. Kevin White, he obviously didn't play last year, so he's going to come in fresh. Uh, ready to go. He's supposed to be, you know, with all the off-season programs that they have, he should be good to go. So overall, it's going to be a big boost to have him back, and I think a lot of Bears fans are going to be pleasantly surprised at what they see. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And now um, now moving on to the running back situation, Jeremy Langford, uh, you know, it looks like he'll be the main guy for the Bears at running back. Uh, do you think he can perform like a main running back, or do you think uh, the Bears, you know, needs some more depth in that position well it's very interesting especially with john fox he's always gone with uh with committees so and i, I think that's what they're looking to do this year they showed a lot of interest in cj anderson they actually had him in the airport heading to chicago when adam gates uh was able to take him away they obviously got the offer sheet and we saw how that went but I mean, the Bears are definitely looking to upgrade at the position. And it's not so much, I don't think it really has anything to say with Langford or Kerry at this point, more of the fact that they just want to have that committee. They want to be able to have that versatility. Uh, mm-hmm. They brought in, uh, you know, they brought in a running back yesterday. Um, and so, you know, it should be interesting to see what they do. I do think they'll add somebody either through free agency or the draft. I'm not really sure what they'll do in that regard. But I think they're looking for versatility. Jacquez Rogers was a, was a guy that, the coaching staff really liked last year. I know fans weren't overly impressed with him, but he's got special teams value. He's a good number two and number three back. Uh, I thought Kerry played well last year. I thought Langford played well. And I think it's just going to be finding that right balance, especially through training camp and going into preseason. But overall, I mean, we're not going to see that. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that featured number one back unless they end up taking somebody like Ezekiel Elliott. Um, but uh, overall, I think they're going to have a solid committee. I think they're going to have a lot of guys that can do, do different things. And that's what John Fox has done basically his whole entire head coaching career. Yeah, that 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 is true. And uh, before we let you, let you go, one last question. Now, I was a big fan of the signing of Danny Trevathan from Denver, the seven-year, twenty-eight million dollar deal, or five-year, twenty-eight million dollar deal. Um, well, do you think that they found their, you know, their, finally they finally found their guy to to man the to anchor the linebacking core in that front seven? Uh, yeah, I do. I, it was it was an incredible signing and is is great value. I mean, when you get a guy. Yeah. Virtually at what a little over or a little under or a little over six million dollars a year uh, for a guy of the caliber of Danny Trevathan. I mean that's awesome. And you know not to overlook the signing of Jarrell Freeman. I mean Jarrell Freeman was another signing that really uh, you know, it was it was a big surprise because you looked at the linebacking core and you saw what it was last year and you look at it this year and I mean they have two of the better inside linebackers in all of football uh, and that's not just me saying or not just fans uh, opinions I mean that, that's national media opinion and that's, that's a lot of respected minds saying that so I mean that's definitely going to be big that was one thing that they really missed was the uh, the middle of the field presence this last year so it's, it's huge I mean I think overall that was one of the better uh, value signings of free agency this year 
Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, thanks for calling in a lot, Aaron. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we hope to talk to you again closer to the draft, and we'll see who the Bears do take at 11 overall. Absolutely, gentlemen. Thanks for having me on. No problem. That was Aaron Lemming of the Bear Report.